Um, before I get started, I did want to just talk a little bit about, you know, balance in terms of offense. And I think, you know, sometimes coaches think balance is, you know, equally running the ball and equally throwing the ball. And sometimes it could be, mean that. But I think being able to effectively run and throw the ball based on the structure of a defense and what their mindset is, is more important. And, um, you know, a little bit of our statistics. Uh, I made this uh, you know, video last year. Our, our numbers were a little bit down this year in terms of uh, stats. But we ran the ball for 224 yards and threw it for 185 yards. But in our state championship game in 15, we had to throw the ball, you know, 34 times. And uh, against Cincinnati Elder, a real good team down in Cincinnati, we threw it seven times. Uh, and, and this is one example in the season, but it, it's been sort of my, my philosophy that, you know, what you have, be able to take advantage of what the defense is giving you and not necessarily, you know, game plan in terms of saying, well, I'm going to come into this game and I want to throw a 25 times game. You, know, you may. Uh, but, but then again, uh, if you throw it 12 times a game or 15 times a game or 18 times a game and you complete 14 or 15 of them uh, very effectively based on what they're giving you or what you can set up, I think that's more what being, uh, being balanced means uh, versus just attempts. Getting into the quarterback skills, and I got this from Coach Karras at Mount Union, uh, the legendary uh, now retired coach at Mount Union, who's, uh, you know, I'm pretty close with. And, uh, you know, I think one of the best lines I like in coaching is you get what you emphasize, not what you coach. And I heard Dick Bennett say that, you know, first. But we all coach everything. But I think, you know, what makes teams what they are is what the coaches uh, emphasize. You know, if you emphasize pursuit, you get pursued. If you talk pursuit, you know, on defense, you don't get pursued. If you emphasize, uh, you know, ball handling in the backfield or carrying out your fakes, that's what you're going to get. I think all coaches say, yeah, we, you know, we carry out our fakes or, you know, we tell them to do that, but they don't do it. Well, I think if you emphasize uh, something, that's what you're going to get. And you can't emphasize everything. So you have to pick and choose, you know, what your vision is and what you want to emphasize. And I think that's what that you know, uh, individual quote actually means. And in terms of all positions, uh, I'm the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach as well as that coach. And I, uh, you know, we try and say you, each position should have three to five uh, measurable objectives that are skills that, that you can measure and grade the kids so they know what you're emphasizing and, and what's important to them. And the five for the quarterbacks uh, in order that we think is, makes a quarterback when we're trying to evaluate or see if a kid can play quarterback from a young age we're saying number one you have to be able to throw the ball accurately we think accuracy is you know the number one skill set for 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 our for a high school quarterback uh this, this may change as he gets older in terms of maybe an arm strength moves up the list but accuracy right now is in our offense number one and that means throwing the ball in the wide receiver's window based on his route and if you think of a window as like a box of where you want to hit them. So I'll give one example. When we throw a hitch, we're pretty specific in saying, look, we want to throw the ball at the outside shoulder so the, so the guy can turn outside in a real tight turn and get up the field. And that's his box. Uh, you know, there's a little box around the right shoulder. If he hits that, he's accurate. Um, and then when we grade the kid, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll grade him on an ADI scale. So we'll say A means it was an accurate throw. B means it was a difficult catch or I means it was impossible. So if he's running a slant, you know, the box might be a little bit in front of the guy, you know, as he's running. You don't want it behind so it gets tipped and, and, and goes to the corner. Same with any kind of drive route. Uh, the bubble, you know, we want it about a, a half yard in front of him so the guy does not have to turn and catch it and try and get up the field. So whatever that box is, did he throw it accurately? Uh, did he, or was it difficult or impossible? So that's the first thing we grade in terms of uh, you know, grading our quarterback and, and measuring that skill. You could do that in practice. You could do it in seven on seven. You could do it in the summer. You could do it on air. The second one we do is uh, the second main skill is decision making. You know, this is the ball thrown to the proper wide receiver on time, being the correct read uh, that has to go to the proper wide receiver. Uh, in, in terms of decision making, we also grade them on our offense, which is a, a very much read option or RPO out, uh, if, you want, if you want to call it that. Uh, did they give the ball? Were they able to keep the ball? Uh, you know, did they throw the bubble? And did they make the proper read uh, in, in terms of doing that? So 
the decision making uh, in terms of in the passing game, reading the coverage, throwing the ball to the proper receiver with the proper timing, and then in the running game, uh, did, the, did the quarterback make the proper read? And um, you know uh, that we give a plus minus scale. So on a, on a particular play, you know, a quarterback could get an A plus. He he made an accurate throw to the proper receiver on time. He could get a B plus. He made the proper read, but it was a difficult throw. Uh, he could get an I plus, you know, and then he could get an A, he could get an A minus. He threw an accurate ball, but he made the wrong read. Uh, and, and you could kind of keep going from there. So we have columns like that uh, when we grade the quarterback to say uh, I, I know and then on the running game, it would just be plus or minus. Uh, did he give the ball properly? Well, he should have up to the end. Did, did he keep it properly? Should he throw the bubble off and that's what et cetera. Uh, the third quarterback skill uh, is mobility. And um, this, this means a, a, a couple of things. Number one, pocket agility. You know, can you keep a play alive uh, in the pocket when you're pressured? Uh, you know, I think most people do some type of blitz drill. Uh, we like the quarterback to stand in there and just be able to maneuver in there and then just throw to an uncovered guy or, or, or have one receiver run around, whatever the type is, so he can kind of uh, feel that pressure, elude that pressure, and be able to step up and, and, and make a throw. Uh, you know, square, square up and throw an accurate pass. And sometimes, uh, what we say, stay under. Sometimes you got to run. So if, 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 if you get heated up the field, you try and maneuver, and the pocket breaks down. Can you find that running lane, stay under, turn it into a draw in essence, and try and make a play with your feet? Uh, and then, of course, uh, since we run so much read option, is the quarterback uh, agile enough to, on a key play, either keep it in the alley or uh, you know make a cut off a block or throw throw the bubble on the run? So mobility is third ranked in terms of how we uh, decide if a quarterback should be a quarterback. And then the, uh, the fourth skill that we can measure is arm strength. And that's the uh, ability to throw a comeback. And, and, and we measure it, we say, from the opposite, from the hash to the opposite side on that. We, don't, we normally don't throw that in a game. But if a quarterback could make that throw, then we feel, you know what, he has the arm strength to probably make almost any throw uh, that we'd ask the quarterback to make in our offense. Uh, and so, you know, just on air or just hand a guy out there, uh, put him on one hash and, you know, try and throw it on the line uh, to, to the opposite sideline. Uh, we feel that that's a way to, you know, test their, their arm strength to say, can they throw a post? Can they throw a vertical route, uh, you know, 35, 40 yards down the field? Uh, if they can do that, we think uh, we're pretty good. And then the fifth skill uh, in terms of looking at a quarterback would be leadership. And, and this one's a, a less measurable in terms of uh, a grade you give them, but just some things we look at, you know, in terms of leadership. And, and, and one that might maybe sometimes underrated is, you know, the quarterback projecting his voice. You know, the quarterback should really be able to uh, command, uh, have a command. And I think your voice uh, matters. You know, if the kid's you know, whispering real quick and not projecting the play, not slowly talking through the play, whatever it is, or projecting it if you're on the line and an auto thing, Obviously, that's not that's not a great set, uh, a, a great skill set for the quarterback. Secondly, uh, one thing we do is on huddle, uh, when we put in our plays, I ha I have the quarterbacks, you know, put in the plays after the game, because I want them taking ownership of the offense. So usually it's a uh, formation and play, and then whatever variation we have off it. So if it's a replay, you know, he'll write uh, in a separate column. It was a give, it was a keep, it was a bubble, uh, you know, whatever whatever else he did. And then he's breaking it down. He's watching it and determining uh, if that was right, seeing what the defense was, seeing what he should do. Uh, another thing we do to have the quarterback take ownership of our offense is I allow the quarterback to call their own plays. Uh, this is kind of, a, a, you know, different. I've, I've, I've kind of been saying this, but, you know, for, for a kid to get a sense of what the offense really is, you learn a lot as a coach and as a, as a quarterback. One, what are they confident in? You know, what do they like to call? We'll do this in seven on seven or in a uh, no huddle team period at, at the end where the quarterback just has command of the offense and, and, and calls it by himself. Uh, you, get, you, you can't go any faster than that for the defense because the quarterback calling his own place. And you really get a sense of what the quarterback has a grasp on. And it really gives the quarterback a sense of, you know, what he likes, uh, what he can do well. And I chart it. You know, to see, you know, what does he keep coming back to? You know, why does he like to come back into the boundary or throw flat or, or whatever else it is, four verticals? Um, obviously, the ability to instill confidence in your players. Uh, we like to encourage, uh, not rip, 
people. Uh, you know, and if you demand the best of yourself, uh, the team will follow by example. Uh, that's that's usually you know something that we're big on. Uh, you know, do it yourself. Be accountable to yourself, and uh, the team will follow. And then you know, what, what, and one of those ways is punctuality. You know, is he on time? Another thing we let the quarterback do is, you know, collect the balls after practice. You know, we feel instead of a manager doing it, uh, the quarterback shows a little bit of servant leadership. He's in charge of the balls. Uh, if we start with 15 balls, you know, we should come back with 15 balls. So it, it, in retrospect, this is just the first part of before I get into some plays. Uh, you know, we want to look at uh, can the quarterback throw the ball accurately? Does he make proper decisions? Does he have the mobility to play the position? Does he have arm strength? And is he a leader? And we think if you have those five skill sets as a quarterback, if you emphasize those five things, uh, that's the kind of player you're going to get. The last four years at two different schools, uh, we've had four different quarterbacks, and, our, and the record has been about the same. There's a state semifinal in there at a pub, closed enrollment public school, and there's a state championship at a, you know, uh, at a Catholic private school. And, uh, you know, each quarterback had, had accentuated a little bit more of these things, but, you know, the, the, the results were the same. Just real quick, uh, you know, some drill work of, of, of how we drill this thing. I think this is pretty, pretty common, uh, but some things we emphasize. You know, individual routes on air, you know, we feel we have to throw bubbles every day. We think the bubble is the hardest throw to practice, and we do it right now. I tell them 10 minutes a day, guys, throw bubbles, and it's just 10 minutes a day. Uh, there are throws we throw a ton, and uh, if you can just do it with your eyes closed and you have the confidence to just throw it, throw it, and catch it, uh, they really can make the offense go, and the timing of it is important. That includes uh, if you have players at the back in your offense, if you throw any flat routes, or if you go to shallow routes. These are shorter throws that need a lot of accuracy because if you throw these balls behind, they're either fumbles or tip picks, and you certainly don't, don't want that. So sometimes they're good warm-up throws. They're certainly good things to do in the summer when you get a quarterback and three, four guys with them. If you, you know, you're not killing the guys by running these routes, but Boy, you get a lot out of it. Um, in any read type routes, uh, the, the coach will, uh, will mimic the defense. So, you know, if we're going to, uh, I'll talk about the smash play in a second, read on the safety. We'll have the coach actually be that safety. Uh, because sometimes when high school kids do it, they don't really do it right. You don't get as much out of it. And then, you know, finally just reps, reps, reps on the base things you throw. Come back into the boundaries of the throw for us. So we rep the heck out of it. You know, just sometimes we'll just throw 15 comebacks in a row on each side. Just get it down, get the timing down, get the quarterback thrown to the receiver that he's going to throw to. A second thing uh, that, that we looked at is, um, you know, the long ball drill. Like it's like, you know, throwing posts and verticals, you know, double moves and corner routes. You know, so they're, they're hard throws, but when you can hit them, they're big, big plays. And we feel we have to, you know, practice those things and, and be specific on it. You know, where do you want the post and how many yards and what point on the field do you want to throw it? So we'll get on that field. If you're thinking 42-yard line and when you cross the 50 in and the post is hit at about 38 yards, you know, you, you, want, to, you want to work that and time it so uh, the speed of the receiver and the, and the, and the, the loft of the quarterback throw uh, sort of times up and you get a chance to hit it. And you'll see some of these uh, on the clip. Uh, sometimes, you know, then we build a half field route with reads. Example would be a curl flat. We'll get a flat player and an inside linebacker, uh, and we'll set up a triangle. So we'll have a curl, a flat, and the back uh, kind of be a check down, you know, uh, a five yard uh, a hook up over the guard. And then we'll say, okay, you know, they match two out of three, and, and the quarterback goes through his process and just feels himself throwing through, a, you know, throwing it through a window. And the receiver feels himself on the curl, come back to the ball. Uh, the back doesn't drift, you know, uh, the, the ball's thrown quickly and accurately to the flat route so you can turn off the field and go. Uh, that's kind of what we do on, on a, a half-field route. Uh, seven on zero uh, with the coach giving the read. So, for example, uh, for running four verticals, I'll say, hey, uh, two high, press corner. Uh, one high, soft corners. And it'll tell the outside guys that they should be dropping, and it gives the quarterback a visual uh, mentally. Uh, when you go seven on zero, instead of just, you know, running the route on air, he knows specifically where he should be looking based on the number of safeties and the leverage of the corner. You know, and then, of course, we'll, we'll be built for one-on-ones, uh, twos-on-twos, uh, uh, you know, in man-type situations, trying to, to work on the accuracy and throwing a ball in the window against man, and then seven on seven, uh, or Skelly, 
you know, usually going best on best with that uh, with multiple groups. Uh, sometimes we'll rush and go nine on nine and bring either the right side or the left side, or sometimes we'll bring two defensive ends just so the quarterback feels a little bit and uh, has the ability to step up in the pocket and, and release the ball. So that's kind of a quarterback skills and drill works we do to kind of build uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about here. And hopefully you'll see some of this uh, reflect in the, in the film. In particular, to uh, going against uh, split safety quarters coverage. You know, we play our defense plays quarters coverage, so we so we see this. So I I wanted to kind of come up with, you know, what are some ways that we want to uh, systematically attack a, a team that you know is going to play split safeties, uh, in particular uh, a quarters press quarters team. Number one, we want to evaluate the quarterbacks. You know, are they pressing or are they off? Uh, what's their speed? How aggressive are they in terms of are they maybe double move? How good are their hips? And that's something that sometimes I talk about is how do they line up to a, a, a nut tight end? And what does the corner and safety do? And how many times does the corner and safety play a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two drill to a, uh, uh, to a closed or nut tight end? Uh, teams that cross key number three, you know, we want to try and take advantage of, uh, of teams that, that do that. Uh, either, you know, uh, in the, you know, hitting the X receiver, doing some things to the trips, uh, that might kind of mess that up a little bit. And I'll, I'll show some things we do that way. Uh, try to avoid the linebacker reroute and get one-on-one -on -one with the safety. I think uh, RPOs now, play action and pass fakes are, are allowing teams to do that. And that's, what's, you know, that's, what, that's a lot of what you're seeing now with the, um, the zone game, with the extra, with the H-back, if you will, or the off tight end. Uh, they're trying to make people run fit and then get that slot receiver one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And we certainly like doing that as well. And then take advantage of linebacker matchups. So uh, basically, these routes I'm going to show, uh, uh, we're working these these actions. All right, so attacking the boundary corner, uh, specifically, uh, we want to do that, number one with the comeback, number two with the vertical, and number three with the post. Again, as we evaluate this corner, we can decide, you know, do we have the comeback to the boundary? That's the number one thing we want to go to. As he gets aggressive with that, we may want to bust that. Uh, can we just get over the top of him uh, vertically, uh, or can we get inside of him on a post? 